Hey, it's John and Justin here for developer day number five. Today we're going to talk about our data pipeline. Here is a diagram of our data processing pipeline. And it shows where we have imports and edits as sources come in and get processed through what appears to be quite a rather convoluted process considering our data is really not that big of a deal or that complicated. Mm -hmm. So we're going to sort of walk you through it, um, how it works, and then explain why we decided to do that. So first, we're going to start with an example. Um, here we have Al Ghadari Farah Afghanistan. I apologize if I didn't say that right. So this is essentially, um, here we have this data block. That's the data we get out of GeoNames. Now we did a little post-processing to combine some CSV files so we got the full hierarchy here and you know the administrative levels and things. But that, that, that's essentially the raw data we get out from it, right? But of course, um, that may not be the format we want to use. So what happens, we pull that in, we have our import script that opens the CSVs, processes it, creates that patch, throws it onto a patch queue. That's a um, Amazon SQS queue. And it sits there until a processing script comes along and says, oh, hey, look, there's something in the queue. We'll throw it in a database to store. And then we'll toss a notification on the processing queue that says this document needs to be rebuilt and reprocessed. So then the build script gets that notification eventually. And the final document looks more like this. And right now, that's all the data we need. We just need the names so we can do a string search for a place API and the coordinates so that we can um, point to it on a map. Right? And so, and then it gets put into our database. Now, that's kind of a lot of work for that, that little document. You know, why do we do all that? Well, John's going to explain um, how this architecture helps us. Yeah. Um, one of the first reasons that we do that is if you take your import and you're reading from a CSV file, you can read from a local CSV file really, really fast. So fast, in fact, that if you're trying to push directly to a production database, you run the risk of taking down your service. You essentially DDoS yourself by trying to update your system. So what we do instead is we write as fast as we can against an AWS uh, queue, an SQS queue, which according to Amazon, you can't take down. Yeah. And we have to write, yeah. <laughs> but um, it acts kind of as a buffer. And then your processing scripts, you can throttle them such that you can kind of carefully put data into your, your source and your final databases in your production environment without, ha without worrying about taking it down. You know, it can automatically throttle itself. So that allows you to collect data as quickly as you want and go process it and then go get some more and essentially throw it in the patch queue and forget about it. One of the second pieces, one of the second reasons is we don't really want to worry about the data after we read it out in a raw format. We would rather just take your data and say, oh, here is data, let's make a patch for it, and let's go ahead and throw it in the patch queue and essentially forget about it. What this allows us to do is import as much data as we want. It goes into the patch queue and then the processing queue, and this stuff will kick off you know, over the course of a couple hours, and it's completely automated. We don't have to worry about you know, automatically kicking things off or whatnot. So it's essentially just load it into the patch queue and forget it. So one question, um, your, your idea of protecting the, um, the, um, the production system, uh, buffering with this queue, why not just take your imports, edits, put it into one queue, and then directly into the database? Why do we have this intermediate ah. processing step? Yeah, uh, the other thing we do not want to do is lose any data in a transformation. So as Justin showed you before, our, our raw data that we're putting in the patch queue is as raw as we can get in terms of combining things together. And we want to keep that raw data just in case we want to change what our final data looks like. Mm -hmm. So we could modify our build script and rebuild documents and not lose any data. We don't have to go back out and try to reparse things. Um, especially when we're talking about things that are scraped from websites, you know, what the Family History Library catalog has, what Ancestry has, what a lot of those other services have. We don't want to go out and try to re-retrieve that. We'd rather just rebuild from source. Yeah, and it also helps us to maintain history of edits 
so that you know that when user makes an edit in information, it goes into the source database, and that stores the history without um, you know compiling it all together and then losing a lot of that valuable history information. Yeah, we'll be able to for any particular final document, we'll be able to tell you exactly where that came from and how it was built, and and where that and where and who and when made that particular edit that shows up in the final. One last bit of fun information, at least, you know, this is kind of new to me. Um, we set up some alarms in Amazon CloudWatch to look at these queues. And whenever the queue, whenever data gets pushed onto the queue, um, the alarm is notified and a message is sent to a service we wrote that will automatically launch all the services after. So, for example, when I import, started importing geo names, goes into the patch queue, an alarm goes off, and processing scripts get started which actually start EC2 instances configured to do processing. And they kind of go multiply and <laughs> they, uh, they pull down, you know, they empty out the patch queue, do the processing, and then automatically shut themselves down when the patch queue is empty. And then, um, and then that sort of trickles over to the processing queue and the build script, and it, it's actually quite beautiful. So. Yeah. Well, this has been Justin and John for Developer Day number five. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Um, a small preview of what we're what we're hoping to show you is what the data APIs actually look like. We'll be going hopefully through we're talking about some authentication, what will be available, what it'll look like, what do we mean by REST APIs, um, how those rest things, how restish we actually are. So we'll see you next week. <laughs>